We're in one of the parking spaces. There's a few chargers in this parking lot. This is one of them. So this is very typical. Functionally, this charger is very similar to most, most chargers. Usually a, we've got a 40 amp breaker and a 32 amp feet, but a 7.2 kilowatts, very similar. It has a standard J1772 connection. This one has, a, sorry, this one has, is a connection for a Tesla, in fact. This manufacturer can actually provide uh, the charger with this connection. In most cases, a lot of the other ones are using a J1772 connection, which is a, sort of a universal for everything. And then uh, a Tesla owner would have used an adapter. So in this case, just sort of what's gonna happen is the resident's gonna pull into the parking space. They've got a tap card. The tap card is gonna be used here to authenticate the charger and start the charging session. So that's telling them now, number one, it's the correct person. So not anybody can pull into this space and use a charger. If I pull my car in here now and plugged in, wouldn't do anything. So that gives them a level of security. Before we were doing this, people were wanting little switches with lock boxes and it was just it was just a mess. So this this is a nice easy way. This is a very common means of uh, authentication. You'll see, we'll, in our in our series you'll see other chargers that do uh, do it in a very similar manner. The charger is now talking to the back end and we're getting uh, billing information. So the customer, this resident is gonna pay a flat fee for uh, every month for the, you, the access to the system and they're gonna be charged for the energy. The energy cost itself will be returned to the condominium corporation, not just from this charger of course, but from all the, char all the chargers. So that means for the property manager, it's really hands off. Really all that actually happens is a, a, a maybe quarterly, uh, a bank deposit arrives and, and to offset this cost and that's that's all they have to do the rest of it is not their responsibility at all this is a very appealing something that's been that they're looking for the we, we as we said before we can't be adding to the property managers a workload the other thing is that we talked about is power sharing if we put these units in and they don't have power sharing then as we hit uh, eight of these we'll have hit the maximum for that panel that we looked at and at that point, the electrical safety authority is gonna go, there's no reason that all these eight can't come on at one time. And when I do the calculation, I see eight, so stop at eight. But you say, no, wait, you know what? It's not really like that. Um, some people are away, some people are here. Some people, they can be charged earlier in the day and later they go, no, that doesn't work. But if we put a, a system in, in the back end to actually control that, and I'll say, I'm gonna control these so that no matter what happens with these chargers, that fuse won't blow because I'm gonna say on this group that when you reach a certain point, I want you to stop, char uh, I will lower down the charge. We'll do whatever we need to do, but we'll control it and we'll guarantee it. The actual, the new code is actually changing to be very specific about that. It was vague in the last code, but it's gonna be very specific about this, clearly this opportunity for, uh, for power sharing. And this is important because this means now that the infrastructure that One Bedford put in can be stretched to two or maybe two and a half times what it would have been. And, and this is a really important piece because these condos have to come up with this money and the more that they can stretch this money to serve more and more people, right? That's what we talked about just a few minutes ago about serving more people, then that's the, the game plan. This is very common, this kind of uh, management for the cord uh, hanging it around the charger, having a hook for it. This is very common and it works not too badly in a single residence. Resident will generally take care of this cord because it's their spot and they care. When we have these in a, a more of a community or shared where they don't really belong to one person, I'd like to see if we can have cord cable management because at that point, not everybody does hang the cable up properly and we have a chance that this cable is on the floor, might get run over, and it, it just makes for a cleaner installation. So uh, when we do these in workplaces and what have you, the one in the back of our office, we have pretty big cords. They're all cable managed. We just pull them out. When you let go, we plug it back in, it all pulls back in. Nothing sitting on the floor, nothing sitting goopy in all the snow and, and uh, salt. So it's really important. So I think I touched on most of those points. I wanted to, before we left, I wanted to go down to the P4 level. So we got P1 and P2, we saw the panels. There's another panel on P3 that looks 
pretty much exactly the same. I just want to show you we did something just a little different on the P4 level because the setup on the P4 level is just a, a bit different with some lockers and stuff. I want to give you a feel for that.